so what do we do now? Well, we need to take our lovely plans and transfer them to the actual wood. Because until we do that, they are just pieces of paper and of very little use to us. So, what's first? Well, let's go ahead and start the fingerboard. <clears throat> so, as you can see, I have this truly lovely piece of 4 inch PVC that uh, this isn't its first rodeo. So I've cut a couple of these out of this thing before. So let's see, let's figure out where the best place to do this is going to be. So, this looks pretty good over here. And I'm going to uh, use double sided tape tape this on so that we can trace around it with the sharpie marker and not lose the ability to draw right up to the edges which you do lose if you use normal tape. So double sided for the win. Right, so I'm aligning the back here, right with that edge. <clears throat> and it is important that you get this aligned correctly down the center line of the tube because if you don't, it um, the f fingerboard will be twisted and you won't have the nice curve that we're going for. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do to make sure I have a nice flat line is I'm going to roll the contiguous part of this bad boy right up against there. And you could also do this with a, uh, a door frame. Anything where you can put the, uh, the continuous part of the tube up against something straight as a guide is going to work. So now I'm going to reach down in here. Hello. Reach down in here and draw. there. So that should be a true center line <laughs> since we're <coughs> using the tube itself to get that. All right, so now we can go back and check. And you can see we got all these X markers for the screws that are right down the middle. So we want to use the semi-transparency of the paper to our benefit here. Make sure those X markers all go straight down the middle on that center line. And they do. Beautiful. So, I'm going to take another piece of double-sided tape and tape down the front. get the sides nice and flush. <clears throat> I'm gonna just kind of hold it down in sections. Now this is not exact because I did not design the fingerboard template compensating for the distortion of the tube's curve. So we are ballparking this. The other thing to remember is that <clears throat> I haven't seen the neck 
off your mini guitar. And so I have approximated a width for this fingerboard that roughly matches the two mini guitar examples that I currently have on hand that I am build using to build two instruments that I'm making. Oh yes, two instruments. Because I'm building both cello tar C style body and an F style body. <coughs> because I don't want you guys that choose an F style body to be left out in the cold. Aren't I nice? Alright, well, we got the outlines drawn. So now, while we're here, <coughs> we're also going to draw <coughs> the marks for the endpoints of the frets and the nut and the locations of the screws. I want to transfer all that over because that way we get that all drilled out before we move on to the shaping phase and the painting of the fingerboard. So let's go ahead and get those marks made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that these sides pull up to my advantage and I'm going to kind of just mark right through from the edge there. Now you, you don't want this to be really far off um, because if one of these is really far off you are going to have notes that don't play in tune. So that would be bad. Um, however, it's actually a lot more forgiving than I initially thought it would be. Kind of thought you'd have to have mathematical precision. <clears throat> and I found it's, it's, it's actually a lot more forgiving than that. Um, and you can cheat things a little bit later if you need to. And it's more and more forgiving the further you get up <clears throat> the fretboard here toward the nut because the frets are spread out more and that means you are less likely to be able to hear if the note is out of tune from the fret being placed wrong. However, all that, all that being said, don't place your frets wrong. Let's not do that. That's why I have these perfectly positioned lines on my plan templates that are measured out exactly to the last decimal place based on the Stuart McDonald fret position calculator. You also can reproduce that if you don't have the plans using the Stuart McDonald fret position calculator. Link in the description. And what I did was design the plans in Adobe Illustrator and used real world units and actually just typed in the exact position values straight off the Stumac calculator results. So they are more spot on actually than any one of these I've done before. I typically just measure them on the fly each time I make a fingerboard, which is incredibly dumb, but hey, what you're gonna do? Took me a while to uh, get around to making a real template. That's all for you guys. Alright, so that's all the side positions marked um, for both sides, for each fret, <coughs> and for the nut. Okay, now, 
this dotted line here is um, it is the approximate position of where the end of the neck heel for the the mini guitar neck should land when you're installing this on the neck. So I'm also going to mark that and put a little little N next to it so that I know what that is. And don't get confused. I'll try to drill a hole for a fret there. That would be bad. Alright. So now in order to do all these screw hole positions, <coughs> you're gonna have to punch through this paper here. So I'm gonna see if I can find an awl and we can use that. Okay, so so reminder, I literally just sold all my tools and I'm working in my father-in-law's basement. So I'm kind of just grabbing whatever I can to get the job done. So I don't know what this crazy thing is. Um, it looks like a big pencil, but it's metal, but it's pointy. So pointy is what we're going for. Typically used a, uh, an awl uh, that looked like a screwdriver just with a pointy end. Um, but I don't think I own that anymore, so I'm going to try this thing. You tell me down in the comments what this is and make fun of me for my lack of knowledge. But hey, I, uh, am no handyman, woodworker, whatever. I have picked up the skills I've needed along the way, self-taught, and, um, pretty sure I do a lot of stuff wrong, but I have gotten the job done that way. So, what you're gonna do? Well, that didn't work very well at all. So, now I'm gonna try. Just poke a hole. Pencil. Okay, we got a little little hole where that that was. So poke bigger hole with the pencil, and then I guess I can shove the fine tip sharpie through there. So just get the uh, just get the initial hole placement on there, and then pull the template off and. Uh, Temple back off and use the big sharpie. So, I'll line this joker back up. Fine tip sharpie and go to all those holes that I made in the paper and put a dot there. Yeah, yeah. And this should get us our initial registration marks. And then we can go back to the bigger sharpie. Tick marks in the holes were. <clears throat> so I already have that center line. So might as well use it as a way to line these up. I'm just checking the uh, checking the template to make sure I don't miss any. I'm going back over here, putting the 
clearer lines so I can go back. And once you get that drill in your hand, things get things get hopping. You uh gotta know where you're going. Cause uh I've drilled many an errantly placed hole by not having clear enough markings for, for myself. It's almost like you have to pretend that there's someone else doing the job and if you don't have clear markings they're gonna screw up your work because you are that person. <laughs> it happens <clears throat> more than I'd like to admit. Um, okay, so now the only thing left to do is um, I'm, I typically don't predetermine <clears throat> where I drill the uh, exactly where I drill, drill the pair of holes for the frets because the way that this works is each fret is going to have a hole on each side that it goes through and then it connects to itself on the back side of the fingerboard. Remember, these frets are zip ties, so they have to tie to themselves in order to lock into place. So, <clears throat> what we're going to have to do is put exact holes the placement of each of these uh, each of these fret ends. So, so I'm just gonna eyeball it, so that's what I do every time. Um, if you want, you can draw an additional line, a certain consistent uh, distance from the edge of the fretboard. That would probably be a better idea. Let's see if I can do that. Um, the issue is that you know this has a taper from the back to the front, and I'm gonna try to draw a line with any kind of reference thing wood, you, uh, it's going to be dead straight down the center line of the tube, which is not going to be, um, not going to jive with the taper that we have going on here. So, um, if I do draw another line, I need to freehand it using a yardstick, probably. Alright, so I'm going to choose line that is inset from the edge of the fingerboard, hopefully by a consistent amount. And I drew some of it. You know how there's all these uh, slick maker videos on YouTube. That's not this video. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get a line on this side. There's a corresponding distance from the edge of the fingerboard so that they look the same. Always with things that are symmetrical when they are off. We notice that as humans pretty pretty good. Like eyes. Stuff like that. <laughs> well that is not um, not even close to the same. It's way closer to the edge. So let's crack on with a take two. Yes, I I did take art classes in college. I just forgot everything I knew between then and now. Um, uh, except, for, except for the teachings of Mr. Mr. Reedy. It's all art. It's all art. So this is art. It's all art. Everything you do is art. Yeah, shouldn't devalue anything. 
with all art. Okay, I'm gonna go back with the fine tip and extend those lines. And yes, if you are following closely, you'll realize that this is in fact the third time I've redrawn those lines and by by Jove, they they may be really wrong at this point. So let's 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 put this back on. You know, just just so that we got something. Go by. This is why uh, why we make templates after all. So that we can uh, use them to template things. Odd that they are named that, eh? So, this template makes it so that we don't have to make this stuff up on the fly like I always have in the past. Yes, kids, this is the first time I am building this thing the way that I'm trying to tell you how to do it. Because that's what, that's what we do in education. You just read the book you know, right before you come in. And then we look like we know what we're talking about. It's a great trick. I don't think that's what educators do. My wife is an educator. She'll be mad at me if she ever hears this. For that crack. Anyways, I I am not an educator. Never taught much of anything. Aside from uh, taught one kid how to draw for a couple of classes when I was in college. Didn't even cover the gas money to get there. And uh, taught like a men's purity group. Not really a class, it was just more facilitating, I guess. So that's not really teaching either. And, uh, yeah, I'm not, not sure if really great outcomes, so I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be teaching anything. But here I am anyway, because who else is going to teach you how to make a cello tar? Nobody! Because... Right, because I'm the only uh, idiot determined enough to uh, learn how to build one. Make up how to build on it as I go, something like that. All right. So lastly, I'm gonna put happy little X's through the uh, screw holes that are not on the center lines or the outer lines. And there we go, kids. I think that's pretty good. Um, all the screw holes got where the fret ends need to be drilled, and I think that, uh, that does it for our fingerboard template. Thank you. Thank you, fingerboard template. You served us well. I'm going to throw this to the side, and then use it again when I start building the next one. Alright, so before I cut this thing out of the pipe, I'm going to drill all the holes because we'll have a lot better control over the piece when it's part of the pipe as compared to when we cut it out. So, um, so what we need to do is find a drill bit that is the right size. So, uh, I don't know about in your world, but in my world drill bits are never really labeled. Um, so I have kind of a handful of drill bits here. I'm not really, not really sure what, what they are, um, but they look like they're in the ballpark, the size I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I think this is the most likely candidate, and I'm going to take one of the, my zip ties, which is going to be fret, and as you see here, 
have one toothy side, one smooth side, and these are four inch black zip ties. I got them from Lowe's or Home Depot. Just make sure when you buy yours that they are four inches because that's the right, it makes them the right thickness that we want side to side for a fret. And make sure they have a toothy side and a smooth side. So, smooth side will go up, toothy side will go down. So, just gonna pop this drill bit here into the drill's chuck. This is a keyless chuck. And I can just do it with my hands. Make sure the drill's going the right direction. These drills have a switch. This one goes left to right like that. Uh, my previous drill had a little switch on the front that you'd rock to the left or to the right, and that would change if you're screwing or unscrewing. Clockwise is screwing or drilling in, counterclockwise is unscrewing or drilling out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in this section of the pipe I know I'm not using with my most likely drill bit candidate. See how well that fits the zip tie. It's pretty good. There's a bit of play in there. Um, could definitely go down a little bit. So let's see if I have anything a little smaller. <coughs> Might not. Again, these are my father-in-law's drill bits. So I just working with what I got can't find anything that fits a little more snugly, that's okay. Um, well, this one seems like it might be a little smaller. Let's give this guy a shot. Let's see how it does. Okay, that looks a little smaller. Yeah, that seems pretty good. There's still some play. But as you can see, that one is definitely smaller than the previous one. And I'll put it in there. It, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Alright, so we're going to use that drill bit to drill all the holes in here. And, and so these, these uh, screw holes doing in the top, those have to be countersunk, so we'll get into that in a second, but I, I will still drill them, the main hole with the same bit, uh, because the screws I have are not going to be any bigger than that, and that's the smallest bit I've got. So, that's the one we're going to use. So, so here we go, and this will be the part that I'm Certain we will time lapse just because I have to drill a lot of holes and this is going to take a while. All right, so once again, before I drill these holes, I'm going to take a little awl, a little stabby tool, such as this one, that I can be more accurate with, um, to mark the locations just so that the so that the tip of the drill bit um, will have a a little uh, depression. To center in because without that um, it's really easy to kind of have the drill bit skip out of the spot that you intended it to go. So let's try poking some holes. So the main thing here is we want to make sure that when we drill through, we drill straight through. So the, the line that we're drilling on needs to be, uh, we drill straight down through in order to make sure that the, the path for the zip tie is 
cleanly right down through the middle. I'm gonna do this to make sure that the path for the zip tie is nice and perpendicular as it goes through the PVC. Um, because when we cut the edges, we're actually gonna have to cut them uh, to fan out on the sides in order to line up with the fingerboard correctly. So I'll show you that when we get there, but for right now, it's just Mark all these holes and then make sure to drill uh, perpendicular to the surface of the PVC so that our uh, zip ties will go through the correct angle. Alright, so now that we now I've got all the holes marked with a little indent from this guy. We have a spot for the drill to uh, home into. The drills have a very got a pointy tip. But it's not super pointy. Uh, it just projects enough that if you have a small like divot there, it'll kind of hold on to that. So let's go ahead and drill. All these holes. Okay, that's all the holes drilled. Um, so, like I said, we need to countersink these ones for the screws. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> that PVC. Anyway, um, so all the holes are drilled, um, so we just need to countersink these that are going to be the dot marker screw holes for the top. Uh, we don't countersink the ones for the frets because they, they just lie flat on the surface. So, let's see if I can find a countersink bit among my father-in-law's stuff. Alright, well I don't know if this is a countersink bit, but it will do the job because it's a whole lot bigger than the holes that I've drilled and it's tapered in the correct way so that the head of the screw can be down below the surface and not get in the way when you're playing the instrument. So, let's pop this jerk down here and countersink all these screw holes. So the trick here is you're not trying to drill a hole, you're just trying to deepen the top part of the hole and widen it so that the screw head can sit below the surface of the fretboard. So, here we go. Beautiful. See how it widens it? and gives us exactly the effect we want. This is much nicer than the countersink bit that I was using. Make sure to countersink the two last screw holes here in the very front as well. Oh. Just beautiful countersinking. Oh, I love this bit. So yes, countersink bit for the win. All right, so we're at the point now where all of our fret zip tie holes are drilled. A pair for each of the 22 frets. Boop, 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 all the way down the neck. And we have all our dot position markers and screw holes drilled and countersunk. So now we are ready to cut this thing out using our friend, the jigsaw, yet again. Once again, friends, safety glasses. There's gonna be crap flying everywhere. Here we go. Oh. 
Okay, so, as I mentioned before, the important and tricky thing here is you don't want to cut perpendicular to the surface of the PVC, like when you were drilling the holes. What we want to do is we want to have the center line of the fretboard straight up to the sky, and when we cut the sides, we are going to want to have the blade perpendicular to that center line, straight down to the table. And this is because we need the sides slightly fanned in order to have them sit correctly on top of the fretboard of the child guitar neck that we are using. So, make sure that you are cutting perpendicular to the surface of the table with that center line straight up on the middle. And then you will get the edges that we need for this to sit right. So, so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm setting the bottom stop kind of on the center line as I cut and then having the edge, having the blade out to the edge so that everything's kind of where I want it to be. And just make sure no matter what you do, don't cut into any of your fret holes. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but make sure you stay outside those things. Stay on the line. Since I'm right-handed, it'll be easier for me to go from the front to the back with control, so I'm just going to kind of curve out here to give myself the space to do that. Alright, so there we go. Now I cut myself a hole so I can get the blade into position to start the cut. There we go. Alright, so remember, center line straight up, and... There you go. See when I got to the end, it used to fall right out of the pipe. So there we are. Here's our rough cut fretboard, all the holes, and all it needs is shaping, sanding, and then to be lacquered black Rust-Oleum spray lacquer from Walmart, $4 a can, can't beat it. <laughs>